And returning now to the continuing flood disaster in Bundaberg, and up to 2,000 people have been evacuated as the river reaches the biggest peak in recorded history. The timing and the, the speed of the flood was quite uh, astronomical. We, uh, we were hit uh, very, very quickly with uh, uh, very little warnings, and the rain we had was just unbelievable. I was there to see the helicopters lifting the people off the roofs and, and all that sort of stuff, the army coming in and the Air Force coming to help. It was just unbelievable. I was watching the river at early hours of the morning, different times of the day, to so have a look to see. We saw uh, containers, I saw many horses, cattle, pigs, big trees, 12, 15, 20 metres long, flowing down that river. It was causing a lot of damage. The hospital uh, started to get water into its electrical parts in the lower, so that had to be evacuated as well with all the patients. There's not too many hospitals that have been evacuated. We had to move them from here to the airport, and that required taxis, it required ambulance, and all hands on deck to do that. The town's been quite traumatised uh, by the events. It's had a significant impact on each and every one of us that live in this community. On the 8th of January, we had a mass disaster. We had up to 6,000 young grey-headed flying foxes lose their life because of extreme temperatures. Very, very sad because it's a demise of a species. It's 42 degrees is sort of a threshold temperature for them. When the temperature goes over 42 degrees Celsius, flying foxes basically start dying. This one's dead. There's another dead one there. They're everywhere. The place stinks like death. Flying foxes don't have sweat glands like you or I, so their mechanisms for heat dissipation are quite limited. And this is what you find, these big clusters of animals at the base of trees. People don't realise how important they are. They're a key species animal and one of the sole pollinators of our eucalyptus forest. When the grey-headed flying fox goes, 200 years after that, we'll lose our eucalypt forests. And then what do we lose? We lose the koalas, the possums and the birds. And they're so important. We know that extreme temperature events are going to increase in the future. This means that animals and humans will be exposed to temperature extremes that they haven't evolved to cope with. Flying foxes, in a way, are canaries in the coal mine. This is sort of a nightmare scenario for us biologists. Um, having witnessed the impacts that extreme temperature events can have on biodiversity. Forget it. It's time to go. Forget it, bro. It's time to leave. Yeah. Too hot, too smoky, get out, man. Yeah. I'm not sure where the front is now, but we're trying to make sure that everyone's safe in Winmalee. Over the last couple of weeks, it's been extremely hot in Sydney for this time of the year, and that creates the right ingredients for catastrophic bushfires. New South Wales has suffered the worst bushfire disaster in a decade. House after house burning out of control. House after house destroyed. My house is fine. It's, my kids are in at the school and we don't know. No one can seem to tell us where they are. There's belief that they're at Winmalee Shopping Centre, but no one can tell me. There's no roll call. I need to know. And no one's giving me answers. Within the emergency services, I think that people are acutely aware that something quite significant is happening. The frequency and the magnitude of the extreme weather events has increased dramatically. Australia's just come through the hottest 12-month period that it's ever had on record. The most striking feature of that was the angry summer. 
the three month period from December 2012 through February 2013. It was remarkable for the number of extreme weather related records that were set. You only need to talk to firefighters and they'll all tell you that things are very different for them than they were 10 years ago. We are warming the climate, heating the atmosphere, heating the ocean. Heat, flood and fire, increasing health risks, all are on the rise in our warming world. We are already paying the price of carbon. The time for action is now. <laughs>